Warning, by the time I finish this sentence, this podcast will already have started using words like fuck. This week's episode of The Scathing Atheist is brought to you by Stamps.com, Adam and Eve, ZipRecruiter, and by the new skin cream for those whose beliefs chafe against natural selection, Evolution. Evolution. Because evolution just, it didn't sound right no matter how I pronounced it. And now, The Scathing Atheist. For all you Trump supporters out there, this is Brandon's business manager. He's not going back to any of you until you finish paying for last time, stop using your rifles as sex toys, and for God's sake, ease up on the Axe body spray. He also told me that your denial that we evolved from filthy monkey men is almost a definition of irony. It's February 2nd. And it's the Feast of the Purification of the Virgin Meeting of the Lord. Oh, what? Jesus fucking Yeah, Jesus. because if your holidays don't sound like dark magic spells, how are we going to know how crazy your cult is? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I have no illusions. I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Enright. And from Ms. Marvel's New Jersey, Ann Arbor, <laughs> Michigan, and Waycross, Georgia, this is The Scathing Atheist. This week's episode, North Dakota bans heffalumps and woozles. Mm. Long-winded priests are about to get the hook like Showtime at the Apollo. And we'll learn that Jehovah's Witnesses come pre shot But first, the diatribe. Okay, I know we've talked about the He Gets Us campaign on this show a couple of times already, but holy fuck, y'all, they're doing Super Bowl commercials. The very definition of extravagant marketing. Budweiser, Pepsi, Toyota, Jesus of Nazareth. Circle the one that doesn't belong. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I kind of appreciate the bold admission that Jesus is just a commodity to be packaged and sold. Right, I mean, nothing that we ever do on this show is going to dampen the sanctity of Christianity like wedging it in between an ad for light beer and one for digital bookies. But it's hard not to dwell on the amount of money. Super Bowl advertising is famously expensive. And when Pringles or M&M spends eight figures on one of these things, there's at least a possibility that they're going to recoup the cost with additional sales of potato chips or conservative outrage. But they're not going to up the sales of Jesus. Of course, of all the ways I've seen Christianity spend its millions, this is nowhere near the worst, right? That, that price almost certainly goes to quieting child rape victims with Kevin Sorbo's career coming in a strong second. But it's still a staggering amount of money. A staggering amount of money, by the way, that almost couldn't help but go to something more productive and less damaging if it were entrusted to any random person. The campaign, again, is spending $20 million to buy two fucking ads with no more of a message than Jesus is pretty cool, yo. That's that's $20 million of the reported billion dollars that they intend to spend all together over a three-year period. And we've talked about the substance of these dumbass ads already, so I don't want to belabor those points, but I do think it's worth reflecting on this colossal waste of money involved in it, especially in light of the constant argument we hear about how religion inspires people to give to charity. Right, It's one of those apologetics you get from the more educated set, atheist or otherwise, and it does have data to back it up. Religious people do tend to give more money to charity than their atheist counterparts. Now, there's a lot wrong with this argument, right? You can dismantle it from a dozen different directions, but few are going to be quite as visible as $20 million worth of primetime advertising, right? Because, see, for every dollar of charity that religion inspires, you got to subtract away every dollar it encourages people to spend on absolutely nothing. Every time it helps trick people into giving their money to a faith-healing charlatan. Every time it encourages people to donate to worse-than-useless schemes like smuggling Bibles into North Korea. And every time it inspires anonymous donors, <coughs> Hobby Lobby, <coughs> to piss away $20 million on two 30-second ads in hope of reaching the what? The, 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 the fans of American football who haven't heard about this Jesus fella? I mean, think about that amount for a second, $20 million. Just imagine that somebody handed you a check 
for $20 million and they asked you to do the most possible good that you could with it? How many homeless people would you keep warm? How many hungry mouths would you feed? How many sick people would you provide with care? I mean, it would be a hard decision, no doubt. You'd probably stay up all night wondering where best to invest that money. Should it go to education, political activism? Should you split it up and donate to a thousand causes or just give a huge shot in the arm to one? And sure, given the enormity of the task, you probably wouldn't get the exact right answer. But no matter where you landed, it almost could not physically be wronger than a TV commercial about how Jesus would probably have worn his baseball cap backwards if they'd had baseball caps back then. Look, if Jesus was truly the inspirational figure they're selling him as, he'd have inspired them to spend that money on something less stupid. In other words, if the product worked as advertised, the advertisement wouldn't be there. They're talking about your Jesus. We interrupt this broadcast bring you a special news bulletin. Joining me for headlines tonight are the diffusion of facilitated diffusion to my osmosis, Heath Enright and Eli Bostic. Fellas, are you ready to just kind of get there eventually? Okay. I'm just enjoying being the superset. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if it's a science joke, but if I worked at it, I might toast this. Oh, God, she's sorry. Right. Well, clearly, I need a minute to come up with better sets of three. So we're going to pause for a word from our first sponsor this week, Stamps.com. Hey, podcast listener, I'm No Illusions. I'm Heath Enright. And I'm Eli Bosnick. You know, if anyone can understand just how quickly your small business can scale, it's us. That's right. One minute you're starting an anonymous blog as a backup for your job at a toy company, and just a blink of an eye later, it's been 10 years, and Eli owns a third of your business. Right. And that's why we're here to tell you about not giving Eli a third of your business. Hey, that's uh, well, not... Actually, Heath, we, we were here to tell him about Stamps.com. Mm, what's Stamps.com? Got him. Okay, see, see, this is why. For 25 years, Stamps.com has been indispensable for over a million businesses. Get access to the USPS and UPS shipping services that you need to run your business right from your computer anytime, day or night. No lines, no traffic, no waiting. And if you sell products online, Stamps.com seamlessly connects with every major marketplace and shopping cart. If you need a package pickup, you can easily schedule it through your stamps.com dashboard so your business is ready to grow no matter what happens like maybe a third of your ownership wants to buy a billboard with a naked picture of themselves on it that was a great idea nope i stand by that set your business up for success when you get started with stamps.com today sign up with promo code scathing for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a free digital scale no long-term commitments or contracts just go to stamps.com click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and enter code scathing stamps.com Eli has spent $400 on oh fake websites. They're deep cuts. People like them. Do they? Sometimes. Also, is 400 a little low? Did you make that a little low? way low. I actually, Dude, I low. started to look up the real number and I was like, that's not funny. Well, that just gets depressing <laughs> at a certain point. And now back to the headlines. In our lead story tonight, Montana Republicans are fucking stupid. I, was, I, like, I, I know that that's not news, but like I, I stared at a blank screen for like 15 minutes trying to write a sentence that summarized this story. And that's where I kept landing. Montana Republicans are fucking stupid. For Republicans. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and for Montanans. And in a spectacular demonstration of that fact, first term Republican state senator Daniel Emmerich has proposed a bill that would require K through 12 science classes in Montana to teach only scientific facts. What? That, that is no theories, no models, nothing Fuck but you. in the, in the words that? of the bill, quote, indisputable and repeatable observations of natural phenomenon, end quote. The phenomena. So, right. Yeah. But you can tell the kids that that apples will fall from trees. But if you tell them why, you'll be answering to <laughs> Daniel Embrick. God damn it. OK, science teacher. What if we're all in the matrix? Science class. Canceled. No more right, science. Oh, no, everything's <laughs> disputable now. <laughs> okay. Look, I get it. This is obviously an attempt at the evolution is just a theory thing, but right. there are lots of facts that disprove creation, guys. Radiocarbon dating, 
fossils, 5,000 year old trees. This isn't going to help you in the way you Okay, will. but you started to say disprove and it's illegal after that. Every, you're right. allowed to just say the facts. That's yeah, it. fossils aren't repeatable. <laughs> I can't make one for you. Now, the bill itself is like a stupidity work of art. It's all a 443 words long, including the whereas's and all that shit. So the fact that he's like able to cram so much stupid into it, very impressive. Right. Quite a feat for a rookie. Like the first paragraph, I shit you not. You should go read this thing again. It's it's, you know, 400 words long. The first paragraph is how important it is that children learn the difference between scientific facts and scientific theories so they won't like grow up and look like idiots when they get jobs. <laughs> they won't do this. Right. <laughs> it, the, the second paragraph proves that by not knowing the difference between scientific facts and scientific theories for real. This is how the bill defines that difference. Quote. A scientific fact is observable and repeatable, and if it does not meet these criteria, it is a scientific theory that is defined as speculation uh. and is for higher education to explore, debate, and test to ultimately reach a scientific conclusion of fact or fiction. <laughs> We're only doing a priori in the state of Montana. No more a posteriori. It's illegal. <laughs> Uh, also, some of the a priori is canceled, too. I, well, yeah, right. Also, right. I don't know what any of the words I just said mean. <laughs> I am the product of the Montana school system, and I'm making it worse now. <laughs> Fuck. June 3rd is a theory, and if it doesn't fit the figure, <laughs> I can't see it. I'm writing the law. Calendars are a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> so, this no. is a law now. I'm a lawmaker. Now, of course, as all of our listeners know, I'm sure that's not how any of this works. Theories don't fucking graduate to facts when we reach some predetermined <laughs> level of certainty. Those two Just words describe with a little cap. Yeah. different kinds of, of things. A theory is an explanation of a set of facts. So saying a science class can teach only facts and not theories would be like saying that English class can teach only words and not sentences. <laughs> not sentences, right. <laughs> and of course, the goal of the legislation is to ban the teaching of the theory of evolution, as Eli said, and like the Big Bang theory and shit. But the fact that this dude is willing to sacrifice children having knowledge of gravity and relativity to get there <laughs> tells you an awful lot about the party's intellectual priorities. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, Noah, gravity and relativity also disprove the biblical yeah. narrative of God sailing over the waters right before he made the stars or whatever the fuck it said. Well, yeah, I, I was I, I originally I wrote plate tectonics and I'm like, oh, they actually would probably no, be used to really that for sure. <laughs> that, that fucks up their whole thing. So does everything, though. So it's pretty yeah. dumb. Yeah. <laughs> and in drag abuse resistance education news. Nice. Republican lawmakers in Nebraska have proposed a new bill that would make it illegal for any person under 19 years old to attend a drag show. So you're probably thinking, where? Yeah, totally get it. One more time, it's called Nebraska or <laughs> Nebraska. It's a bullshit state somewhere in the middle <laughs> that shouldn't count for anything. But sadly, some good people are stranded there. And they have to deal with insane Christian right bigots all the time. But fortunately, there is a hero for the good team. State Senator Megan Hunt is fighting back against the bill and that includes a proposed amendment to instead put a ban on religious indoctrination camps because those are actually bad. OK, so so Nebraska GOP rule of thumb for you. If at any point in the drafting of your legislation, you have to seriously ask yourself, holy shit, did I just outlaw Bugs Bunny cartoons? Just throw it away. <laughs> throw away the thing you're working on and do a different thing. Yeah, I, I tell you what that other thing is that you can do, but Noah and Heath won't let me. So <laughs> Megan Hunt, <laughs> Megan Hunt is clearly she's just doing this to make a point, and she made that clear from the start. Her amended version has no chance of passing, and she knows that, but it has generated some attention, which is exactly why she did it. So here's the Republican version of the bill that she's fighting against: LB three seventy one would ban all children and all adults who are eighteen years old from attending any event in which people, quote, sing, lip sync, dance, or otherwise perform before an audience for entertainment and exhibit a gender identity that's different from the one they were assigned at birth using 
clothing, makeup, or other physical markers. <laughs> Cut to the bills drafting. Y'all, I'm not writing or a big plastic penis into a damn law. How about other physical markers? Huh? <laughs> Again, if your bigot law accidentally bans all the high school musicals in your state, the <laughs> law yep. is the problem, guys. Yep. Right. <laughs> Besides being just clearly evil, it's also incredibly stupid. They just made Shakespeare illegal in the bill. Yes. And it's illegal for uh, Noah to juggle any objects in the state of Nebraska because of his long flowing lady hair. And Bear. it's illegal for me to uh, sing a song with my decolletage being shown off with a deep V-neck. <laughs> <laughs> but also, it's full of loopholes. For example, you can do anything you want as long as you're not entertaining so okay actually my cleavage singing is probably fine and of course <laughs> you can use mental markers for drag instead of physical ones so you can still do an extremely non-entertaining aloof drag show that would be quite <laughs> possible and you can still entertain people with drag poetry read aloud huh. and you can say you were assigned male at birth and do a drag show as a female persona as long as you were lying at the beginning. <laughs> These people are idiots. This drag is for educational purposes only. Yeah. You want to know how loophole laden and stupid this law is? It wouldn't ban drag queen story hours, which is, I guarantee you, the reason they drafted the damn thing in the first place. <laughs> damn it. Uh, no reading books in a dress. Naked librarians. Fuck. God. Oh, <laughs> man. Yeah, so here's the justification for the Republican bill from State Senator Dave Merman. Quote, I think the vast majority of Nebraskans would agree that, you know what? I'm going to stop you right there. That's a bad thing. Don't You're start anything bad thing. with yeah. the vast majority of Nebraskans. <laughs> therefore, nope, not good. But that's what he did. The vast majority of Nebraskans would agree that sexualized dancing and enhanced Genitals what? is not appropriate for children to view. I'm sorry, Interesting. Enhanced? Enhanced genitals. Is that the way? Like, so does State Senator Dave Merman think drag queens have bionic tits, Heath? Is that what you're telling <laughs> he me here? Definitely does. Something similar. Yeah. Shoot missiles out of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's funny about this bill is that this bans so many family friendly, excellent performers, Dolly Parton, but not me. Not yes. Me. <laughs> right. Yeah. So the level of bigotry is terrifying, but I am very happy that this guy, Dave Merman, is extremely scared of whatever the fuck enhanced genitals might be. In his head. <laughs> and I'm also very happy that we have Megan Hunt. She made a very important point using a great version of make it black, but with an added twist. And she used Christian instead of black because Otherwise, that, that would have been super confusing for Nebraska Republicans. So mm -hmm. that, that was helpful. She basically kept the entire bill the same, except she switched out drag show for religion camp. And then she pointed out how her bill's version, according to overwhelming amounts of data that we have, would prevent a bunch of sexual assault of children, which is a real thing and a problem. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not adding, but implying. Whereas the Republican bill would address the imaginary problem of Watching art that Republicans don't like, also known as art, oh, also known as watching art. The art, yeah. And speaking of shit that freaks out Nebraska Republicans, it's time for a word from this week's second sponsor, Adam and Eve. Hey, podcast listener, it's us again with a very important announcement. Your partner wants Fuck stuff for Valentine's Day. That's right, Noah. Big Chocolate and Big Flower have been pushing the harmful and destructive narrative of anything other than fuck stuff for way too long, and we are here to correct it. Because fuck stuff and fuck stuff alone is what your partner wants for Valentine's Day. And there's no better help for your fuck stuff than adamandeve.com. Founded as part of a master's thesis in family planning, Adam and Eve was the first mail-order contraceptive business in America. That's right. And don't let the title fool you. The folks at adamandeve.com are well aware that God is dead. And that's why they're sex, sex work, and queer friendly. They've got outfit stuff, dildo stuff, tie each other up stuff, all your Valentine's Day fuck stuff needs. But that's not all. When you go to adamandeve.com and select almost any one item, you'll get it at 50% off. Almost any item and free shipping. 
So head on over to adamandeve.com and be sure to use the offer code SCATHING. Again, that's S-C-A-T-H-I-N-G, SCATHING. That's offer code SCATHING at adamandeve.com. Have a happy Valentine's Day. And by that, we mean fuck each other. Send us a video. Don't, don't say that. The people will. Send us a video if you're hot. Not better. It's a little better. Well, better, but still not good. And in kitty litter news, you know, occasionally folks will ask us why we don't spend more time on the silliness of the left side of the political spectrum. After all, it it is there. There's the witch cult hypothesis, tarot cards, sacred telescope stopping mountains. And the answer is, well, we we do talk about that stuff. We're just not obsessed with that stuff like right wingers are. So it it feels. You should have voted for Hillary Clinton. Like we don't talk about those things in comparison to, you know, Tucker Carlson, who can spend an hour of his show freaking out over an Eminem sexuality. And. (laughs) The reasons for that are numerous, right? One, we were already jerking off to the green M&M. Oh, yeah, if anything, the flats made her hotter. Thank you, right? I want her comfortable. Two, often when you encounter silliness on the left, it isn't empowered. As soon as the you have to pretend tarot cards are real bill hits the House of Representatives, yeah, we'll be right there objecting to it along with you. But that stuff isn't empowered. The rights bullshit, on the other hand, is empowered. They are making laws around the delusions of their followers. And we got a great example of that this week as a bill put forward in North Dakota bans accommodations for students who identify as animals. What? Which I will remind you is a made up conspiracy theory based on a moral panic over a kid who wore cat ears to school. Uh, actually, it's even dumber than what Eli just said, which is, is it? impressive in a way. Mm-hmm. It was a picture from Facebook of some random lady wearing cat ears, not to school because she's a grown up in Norway, the country of <laughs> Norway. But some panicky <laughs> idiot in the US posted the photo and wrote, this girl's family petitioned the school board for the right to identify as a cat. This is crazy. <laughs> That's the basis of this. Wow. Oh, there's never a basement. Yeah. So House Bill 1522 is an emergency measure. Oh. Emergency. Yeah. Uh-huh. Sponsored by six Republican state lawmakers and declares that North Dakota schools may not, quote, adopt a policy establishing or providing a place facility school program or a combination that caters to a student's perception of being any animal species other than human, end quote. Which again, no school has ever done. Right. Right. They might as well be passing a bill that Bill Gates can't put a microchip in your vaccine and Facebook can't make all your pictures public at midnight. (laughs) Okay, well, we'll look out for that. But just a quick reminder, a bill in Texas would literally make it illegal to sell smushed up aborted fetuses at the supermarket without proper labeling on the jar. Yep. That's a real bill. Yep. All I want is video of the moment when the committee of idiots realized they had to add other than human being to that language. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. Yo, this we can't have toilets this way. Hold on. An emotionally difficult 45 minutes for sure. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. Eli, if that animal stuff isn't real, Why are Republicans going after them? Well, that's because this bill is a bigot idiot trap as well. See, in addition to banning accommodations for students who think they're animals, the bill also bans accommodations for students who are trans. That's the bigot part. But the trap idiot part is even dumber. See, when they receive pushback against this bill, the Republicans who wrote it are going to be like, so you want to let kids identify as animals? As like a gotcha. Yeah. And the sad thing is that gotcha is going to work on a not insubstantial percentage of North Dakotans. Right. Yeah. No, their attempt at being clever, possibly successful attempt at being clever is asking, when did you stop eating lunch and beating your wife? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Also, I do want to let kids identify as animals. What the fuck difference does it make? How is that (laughs) preventing anything? Yeah. So. This bill is obviously monstrous and stupid, and I hope it doesn't pass, but honestly, who knows? It's structured as a political landmine, and goodness knows, North Dakotan politicians aren't exactly eager to stand up for trans rights, even when they're not booby-trapped, but um, 
Don't worry, podcast listener. I have a solution. I've submitted my own bill titled HB Homo Says What, and I think it's going to get a lot more Republicans <laughs> on our side. Yeah. Might actually work. And in wearing the green pillow news tonight, if that reference doesn't make sense to you, it's because you're not sophisticated enough for it. Election denialist, fart modulator, and technically professional fluffer Mike Lindell is back in the news, and that's as much of an excuse to talk about him as I need. Right? I mean, he's an aggressively Christian person dedicated to installing a federal theocracy, so I feel like his antics are pretty scathing atheist appropriate, like, no matter how you do the math. But but regardless of that, I would talk about him anyway because everything he does is hilariously, tragically stupid, and that makes me happy, damn it. And his latest antic was when he tried to get himself elected as the chair of the Republican National Committee. And after... <laughs> How'd that go? After weeks of guaranteeing <laughs> victory and laughing at those who doubted his chances, he got four votes. <laughs> <laughs> Right, and he probably flew those in on a computer from Germany. I, mean, <laughs> I have a flight map that probably proves oh, that it, is so. a, that is a graphic. So, guys, 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 huddle up. We have to goad him into boxing a world champion boxer. <laughs> I don't, I don't know why or how we'll do it. Just that we could do no, it. No, we definitely we could. could. And I know why. Listen, Mike Lindell versus Logan Paul. If we promote that, we will make oh. some money. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just burned down the theater. Oh, there was no boxing match. <laughs> Sorry, we just made the species stronger. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now I, I should be clear that the voting pool here is 168 people, right? So, like, it's funnier if you imagine this is a national vote with thousands and thousands of voters and he only gets four. But the fact that an absolute joke candidate managed to get any vote at all is too terrifying to undersell, Right. This is a select group of leaders within the party and better than 2% of them were like, yeah, no, let's let's give our committee over to the uh, man who once used a voice modulator on a fart to protect its identity. <laughs> but still, losing 111 to 4 is delightfully humiliating for Lindell, especially when you consider that the loss was to the historically incompetent Ronna McDaniel. Right. Like last time she was in charge of the RNC, she gave us now. <laughs> yeah. Also, just want to mention that she's the niece of Mitt Romney. Mm -hmm. So at some point, Mitt Romney's brother and his wife were like, Ronna Romney nailed it. That's the name. <laughs> we're going with. And Ronna's mom is named Ronna. Huh. That mom was like, I'm Ronna Romney. This name is fucking perfect. Definitely running that back one more time. And after Ronna Jr. shat the bed for the RNC in Joe Biden's first midterm, the party was like, mm, yeah, but Lindell would have shat like other beds too somehow. <laughs> we're, going, we're going with Ronna. I'm sorry. Forgive me the long tail marketing. Do you hear that, Anna? If we had had a girl, you would have had the same naming convention as Ronna Romney. Aren't you glad we had a boy, sweetie? <laughs> So the whole campaign he ran was hilarious because everybody seemed to know it was a joke except him. And, and, it's, and it's not like, no, we told him it was a joke, right? Reporters kept pointing out that he had max six votes, but he'd laugh them off and he'd show them this Rasmussen poll that showed Republicans at large wanted him as their RNC chair. Or rather, it showed that more Republicans knew who he was than any of the other name <laughs> on that pollster's list. On a Rasmussen poll, which is yes, nothing. Yes, right. This is nonsense. It's like a lie detector. So, Mike, you're saying you won just like Adolf Hitler would have won if he was on that <laughs> poll because of name recognition? Congrats. Good job. Yeah. He's like, he's like if Carrie deserved the pig's blood and didn't have power. <laughs> now, of course, if you thought that this defeat was embarrassing enough to leave him in bed for a few days licking his wounds, then you underestimate how lumpy and uncomfortable his pillows really are. Because he was right back at it the next day. He, he promised us additional shenanigans in the near future during an appearance on Steve Bannon's War Room podcast. According to Lindell, the RNC has promised to allow him to run what he's calling an election crime unit to look into the 2020 elections. Nope. Yeah, well, so I, I honestly, I don't know if that's a thing that they're like funding and staffing or if they just said like, yeah, man, whatever, when he suggested doing it. <laughs> and I also don't know which of those would be funnier. But 
Look for further <laughs> updates soon. And fingers crossed, a capper to the Absolute Proof trilogy over on God Awful Movies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and in Who's Drinking the Blood of Christ Tonight news, <laughs> a pope did something that I enjoyed for the very first time ever last week. Pope Francis decided to roast the fuck out of all the shitty bloviating priests who take forever when they're giving a sermon. According to Frank the Tank, all these long abstract homilies are, quote, a disaster, and he wants a hard cap at 10 minutes. Okay, well, I appreciate that, but what an incredible admission of guilt that is. Right, like, like okay, we all genuinely believe that you're speaking on behalf of God himself, and, that, and, we, and we all genuinely believe that the stakes of what you're saying are eternal paradise or endless suffering, but... But after 10 minutes, everybody's going to check out. No. <laughs> you make this a tweet or something? Also, Keith, popes do stuff we like all the time. Ratzenberger died last month. Fucking love that. <laughs> sure. sure. Right? John Paul stayed dead last month. I liked that Loved too. Loved it. Yeah. Good job. Rotted. So Frankie made his comments during a training seminar at the Pontifical Institute of Liturgy in Rome. And he explained that, yes... The title uh, of our institute has like pontificate right in there. Uh, <laughs> it basically means pompous institute of religious pontificating yeah, it the, does. the institute. But just don't though. Don't even though the title says to do that. <laughs> Here's the exact words from the Pope. Quote, I sometimes hear people say, I went to this parish and yes, it was a good philosophy lesson. 40, maybe 45 minutes. No more than eight to 10 minutes. You do a thought. You do a feeling, you do an image, and you get the fuck off stage. I don't. He said everything except the, the last part. Okay, all stage. right, yeah, 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 it's okay. Yeah. But everything else, exact words from the Pope. Based on that quote and what I know of Catholics, though, that it could be that he's worried about his parishioners knowing that extra thirty or to thirty-five minutes worth of stuff about philosophy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Louder, faster, funnier. Rule of threes: no beeping a doodly do. I'm the Pope. You know, he's got all the <laughs> sure. So yeah, that was fun. You got to love it when you hear an 86-year-old man during a pontifical seminar dressed like a magical uncut penis telling everyone to work on their tight 10 because the lack of brevity is making them all look silly. Just <laughs> great stuff. <laughs> all right. So I guess with that knowledge that our homily has gone way over time, I suppose we can wrap up the headlines for the night. Heath, Eli, thanks as always. Jumaji. And when we come back, you'll be that much older. Lou, 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 coming home stuff. Coming home stuff is my favorite stuff. Lou, Lou, Lou. Hey, Heath. How was your date tonight? Meh. I mean, it was okay. She was a little bossy, though. Bossy? How so? Oh, you know, like, why do we need an extra table? And what do you mean you're ordering the whole menu? Like, that kind of stuff. Oh, I see. Yeah. Too bad there's not some sort of technology that can easily find the right person for you. But if you're hiring, there is. There is a technology that can quickly help you find the right person for your open role. Zip Recruiter's matching technology. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash scathing. Wow, uh, that lead-in really feels like you're talking about prostitution, Heath. Are you? No, nope, I, I am not. But uh, yes, those exact words were in the must-reads, so Weird. I said them. Weird. Got it. So what's Zip Recruiter? ZipRecruiter uses smart matching technology to identify the most qualified people for a wide range of roles. If you see the one, ZipRecruiter makes it easy to send them a personal invite so they're more likely to apply to your job. Want to really catch their eye? ZipRecruiter offers attention-grabbing labels that speak to job flexibility, like urgent, training provided, remote, and more. Are you sure you're not talking no, about... No, 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 no. I am reading the lovely copy from our good friends at ZipRecruiter who... Do a very good job. They buy lots of ads from us. They do they just normal. They do normal job hiring. It's good. Normal. Find candidates you're crazy about with ZipRecruiter. Employers love ZipRecruiter. In fact, four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. And see for yourself. Just go to this exclusive web address to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash scathing. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash Scathing ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. To hire normal, regular employees normal. who you do not have sex with. 
Exactly. Yes. I mean, you can still have sex with your employees. Nope. Though, nope. Nope. No, you cannot. You, you can't. Is that a rule? Uh, it is, in fact, uh, a law. So don't do that. Oh. You know, it's hard to make friends when you're a kid, and it's even harder when you're part of a weird ass religion that sees normal childhood interactions as nefarious temptations of the devil meant to lead you astray from the path of Christ, which we're going to learn all about in this week's God Awful Mini. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Jehovah's Witness lesson number 47. Who should be my friend? It's the it's the story of. How to Avoid Satan's Plot for World Domination, which is mostly based on potato flashlights and baking soda <laughs> volcanoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Even the night and all that. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh-huh. So <laughs> that's Satan and his roundabout plots. And Eli, how bad was this mini? <laughs> well, if you loved the overly smooth, uncanny valley of early 2000s Nickelodeon animation, but you wish it was positively bursting with the psychosis of America's most obvious cult, you will love <laughs> this movie. It's the second most obvious after Scientology, but yes. Yeah. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst trying to figure out the bad guy as I'm going through it. Mm -hmm. It's really confusing. So it starts the bad guys like kids who go home in a minivan that get picked up in school. But then it's like, OK, no, it might be the potato flashlight. That might be the mm -hmm. bad guy. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, it the Jews. The Jews are the bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, science. I think science is the bad guys. Ultimately, we land on science. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So I was going to go with best worst Bible character. Ooh. Right? So, so a big part of this is like this fanfic about Martha. Martha. Martha's claim to fame is that people mistake her for Mary Magdalene's sister. <laughs> right? Like Martha, the most noteworthy thing that Martha does in the Bible is warn Jesus that Lazarus probably stinks by now. That's real. Look it up. <laughs> right? That's and, and we spend like half of this video on her story. Martha, Martha, well, Martha. Yeah. <laughs> her made up Jehovah's Witness version. Well, right. Story. Yeah, exactly. Her fanfic story. Yes. Were the weird cult offshoots of Christianity doing like a dib situation <laughs> and fucking Mormonism and baptism came in hard and fucking Jehovah's Witnesses are just checking under chairs and couch cushions. <laughs> I got a Martha. We got Hawkman. <laughs> oh. uh, and I'm going to go with best worst friend Yeah Let's all say for now All right Best worst friend Keep in mind they can animate anybody they want to Really Of any size Of yep. any, <laughs> any size. size Just keep that in mind All right So let's get this video going We're going to open up with Sophia That's our main character She's a friendless outcast J-Dub Sitting all by herself at recess While all the other kids have fun Yeah Right. And I think we're panning over like all the things that Jehovah's Witnesses aren't allowed to do here. Yeah. That the other kids are doing. OK. And, and keep in mind that you could show the kids like drinking and smoking and fighting. Nope. The Jehovah's Witnesses, things that bad children do includes phone games and silly dances. Yep. That's why she should shun people. Playing the sport of basketball is one of them. Yep, yeah, that's one of them. Playing with the devil's pixels. Yeah. Yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. Okay, question. Here's a confusing one for me. One of those things that I guess they can't do is rap as a duck because <laughs> yep, they spend a while showing us a kid rapping, but as a duck, like, rah, 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 rah. Yes, I don't yeah, yeah, right. know what. And she looks on like jealous of this kid. Who's yes. Allowed to do that. And then they just move right on. I wanted to explore that kid's life so much more. Right. Yeah. Yes, the story of the duck child is where all the real fucking interest was. But yeah, so basically we watch her looking at all the kids fucking celebrating birthdays while they vote or whatever. And then <laughs> she, she gets on the bus. She's the only one on the bus because apparently, and this takes a while for us to figure out, apparently there's some like after school thing that she's not allowed to go to, but everyone else is going to. Right. I thought they just had like a, 
a JW bus that she had to ride by. <laughs> no blood transfusions on this bus. Don't worry, kid. Get on. Well, you yeah, know, I had all the other kids must be going to a cool blood transfusion party <laughs> or something. Yeah. They're just getting into a different. We have birthdays. This is so fun. Name your birthday that you have. Go. Go. <laughs> So then we cut to our title screen. It says Lesson 47, Who Should Be My Friend? And at the bottom, by the way, it includes Proverbs 13, 20, which reads, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Destroyed? A fool was right. Yeah, a fool is right fucking there. And they went with destroyed. (laughs) So fucking dumb. Okay. So so we, uh, we check back in with Sophia. She's at church listening to a sermon about friends. So that's nifty. Well, it's not a sermon. It's a smooch man or whatever. Oh, the okay. Yeah. Right. Joe, it's a a family house quimmer. Well, yeah. Well, but this is, this is in the church, right? This is it. This is a, a, a church function of some sort. And she sees that there's another girl. I wrote about her age because we don't see them in comparison to each other yet. Sorry. Another girl about her age? Is that what we're going to say? <laughs> well, that's what I wrote. I okay. Mean, <laughs> out of nowhere, a 45-year-old woman who's like eight feet tall and has a child voice walks up and is like, I want to be your friend. Those are sweet fucking notes you took during church. I'm your friend. We're the same age. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So so the sermon wraps up and they both were taking notes about the sermon with the same like doodle method and and, and picture style do you have to take notes i don't know do they take notes during church i don't i have to ask some of my xj dub friends if they actually have to take notes during their sermons i went down this rabbit hole they do they take notes and then they have to give a talk this is what they're referencing they have to give a talk to the other children about the notes they took in church that they were all at. It's the worst, oh God. most least imaginative cult ever. Oh. It's like someone was sitting in normal Christianity and they were like, not enough homework. More <laughs> homework. Yeah, because we learned that this girl, this is so this is Lydia, the 45 year old girl that she's going to befriend. Lydia and Sophia have been assigned to do a talk together and they'll have to work on that at some later scene. I was really hoping we would flash over to like whatever youth group this is. And Lydia is the only full grown adult. She's just been held back in JW chat five times. <laughs> yeah. She was like Dwight at karate class with a bunch of kids. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, okay. So now we're in class. It's the next day. All the other kids come into the class and they greet their friends and are happy to see each other like a bunch of fucking heathens. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we watch Sophia be like, look at all these other kids interacting like wanton whores. I want to be a wanton whore, but I shan't. And like, that's the conflict here. (laughs) Yeah. Well, because they're all talking about that that fun science camp thing they did the day before. Right. Everybody's got a (gasps) comment about that as they walk by. Okay. Science camp. Science camp was confusing. They didn't say just like. We did science camp. No. Uh, they described something about a safari tree house. Yep. And then some other kid was like, I didn't think your team was going to make it through the safari tree house. What competition of teams. I don't know. Would happen inside a safari tree house. I was thinking about this forever. And they, again, they just move on. Right. Yeah. Cause, cause fucking duck wrapping kid was there. Explain stuff. If we got in his story, we would know. Yeah. So, but yeah, but we see everybody talking about how much fun they had there. They're all like, they've all got swag and all the swag has a picture of an atom on it. I guess that represents science to them. At first I was like, wait, are, jo- are J-dubs against atomic theory? I had not look that up. I don't think that they are, but I don't know. I mean, technically, yes. Right? Well, yeah, gotta no, be. that's fair. The water and the wine thing really falls apart. Yeah, those, those lines of communication break down early and often. Yeah. But apparently the thing that she missed out on was a science club because her religion is anti-science compared to other Christian denominations and she couldn't go. Right. And let's be clear here, right? It would have been so easy for them to be like the science club where we learn about evolution. Yeah, I can't believe how we killed God in that big pinata, right? Something right. like that. No, 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 no. no. This is any science. The J-dubs are just drawing the right. line at the word science. Yeah, this is potato flashlights. How the devil gets <laughs> you. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, so we see her like wishing that she could be part of this. She goes to lunch and all the other kids are like, oh, you're good at science. We wish you would join our science team and help us with our potato flashlight. Okay, that's the plot now. Yes. That like she's getting tempted by Satan and his light bulb wiring. Yes. Is, is that, are they like anti-circuit? <laughs> They're anti-nucleus. <laughs> right. Maybe circuits mm -hmm. too? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't know if it was the nucleus or the electrons that they were pissed about. It could have been both. But... It's tough to tell, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, so so but she helps them with their science project because she's good at science. And then we cut to her back at home asking her dad if she can be in science club. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, Yeah, so it just seems objectively positive for me to join the science club and make friends. What do you think, Dad? And Dad's like, It's not though. No. Right. Well, except it, dad is actually more like, it's not though. Right. He's got this really thick Eastern European accent of so I don't I have no idea where this guy's from. But yeah. It's um it's weird that I can tell that cartoon character hits his wife and kids, right? <laughs> oh, Jesus like the Christ. the way that cartoon character holds anger in his body, I know his family's unsafe. Yeah, it's not from the accent. Eli's not saying that Slavic <laughs> people abuse their wives. He's just saying No, that. that's <laughs> also true and it's okay cuz they're white. But I'm just, talking oh, about Jesus I'm talking about this cartoon right here. I like if he comes up to me, I'm like, you should leave your kids alone. I just I feel his rage <laughs> as his daughter asks to go to science camp and I fear for them. Yeah, this guy beats up Eli at a supermarket for sure. Yeah, for no, 100 percent sure. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, but she, she's like, oh, you know, it'd be great if I could be at science club and I could have friends. And the dad, though, his reaction to this is to be like, yes, but unfortunately, I picked a friendless religion for you. So you can't have friends. Right. Is is the ethical thing that happened, according to this video? Yeah. No, he, he he has this weird moment. And hey, if you have to caveat, leave your religion. Right. He's like, yes, no, God, God wants us to have friends. But I'm going to stop you right there. I'm going to stop you right. right there. Yeah. Because the implication of what he says is, but not those children. God hates those children. Exactly. <laughs> but not science whores is the rest of that sentence. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so, and, and, and she's like, huh, that doesn't really make sense. And he's like, well, how about we do a Bible lesson? Why don't you go read up on that well known biblical character of Martha? Okay. Again, Martha watched Jesus resurrect her brother Lazarus. That's it. How is that helpful? No, it's not at all. No, it really isn't. And we spend the rest of the video on this. <laughs> Martha's sitting there in her agent's office. I was hoping maybe you could get me into the background of like the Godfather 3 or something. No. <laughs> yeah. um, we we do have an do offer from you. the Jehovah's Witnesses, though. They said they found you some couch cushions. <laughs> so, How'd you like to be proof not to have any friends? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but Sophia studies up and then she's going to tell us and the family the biblical, <laughs> the extra biblical story of Martha. And we're going to get some animation to go along with that. Right. And it's just a tiny moment. But at the very beginning where they're introducing her, she says, Martha liked to cook. <laughs> and it's so obvious the movie trying to be like, see, kid stuff. We didn't go directly into our deeply nefarious and torturous philosophy. We said like to cook first cartoon well they yeah that that part is kid friendly but even before that they're like martha is a jewess yeah uh -huh. and martha they like, do introduce her as a jewess really hard to spin that if you're not jewish don't say <laughs> jewess like that god <laughs> so yeah so so martha is the sister of lazarus she's also got another sister named mary no not that mary or that Mary, actually. The fourth most popular Mary of, the, <laughs> of all everybody. Is, is Martha's sister. Her sister is in our movie. That's who we got. That's who we found under the couch. Yeah. But Martha, she liked to cook and clean for Jesus and his disciples because she's a woman. But some of her friends thought that Jesus was stupid. So we cut to one of her friends thinking Jesus is stupid. This is Talia, right? She's going to represent those kids with their damn potato flashlight. Yeah, and I don't know how they captured this, but they somehow managed to give Martha in this cartoon that flattened, defeated voice that all cult members have, right? Where you're like, hey, uh, you're standing in front of the thing, and they're like, I would like to tell you about Jesus. And you're like, nah, just take a pill. I gotta, I'm going to the... Yeah. You're yeah. like halfway to crying in every sentence. <laughs> every sentence. I could just... 
Do you want to come with me forever and leave it all behind? <laughs> right. But Talia is trying to lead. Talia is her friend, supposedly, but she's trying to lead her away from Jesus is what we're watching here. Yeah. So that night we get Jesus showing up in town with his entourage. Jesus has short hair in this because J-Dub Jesus ain't no fucking hippie. Okay. <laughs> I'm so this is contextual. I'm sorry. But if you watch this whole lesson instead of just the, the animation, Jesus has the exact same haircut as the guy giving this lesson in the J-Dub video. So he very clearly was like, no, no, I think he would have a, a side part, you know, just like, uh, <laughs> well, base it on whoever you want. But it's re Watch the whole thing. You'll see the guy's side part. It's super funny. Amazing. It's like the low budget movie that had to have the same guy be multiple parts, but it's a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So Jesus shows up and <laughs> I enjoy this part. Martha's like, oh, Jesus is here. They brought five unannounced friends to hang out. Cool. Cool. cool, cool. This is awesome. Yep. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we watch her waiting on everyone hand and foot. And of course, this is the one part of the Bible where she actually shows up, right? Like uh, her sister is just listening to Jesus speak while she does all the work. And Jesus is like, why don't you also just listen to me speak and, and stop doing that? And she's like, oh, OK. And that's her whole story. And now he's going to give a really long speech. I love this. I right. love what's happening. <laughs> this is great. So anyway, so next day by the well, Talia is telling them that Christianity is way too progressive on the issue of women's rights for her. You, she, she, the, the women sitting in and listening in on the lesson, like the men. <laughs> it's it's weird because their villain is is advocating current JW policy. Honestly, yeah. So much so that when I was trying to decide which JW we would do, it was between this cartoon and a different one about how women shouldn't speak up so much during family prayer. So it's a weird thing to have your <laughs> villain say in your movie. Right. So this this friend Talia is like, hold on, he did word teaching to ladies? Get the yes. fuck out. Women are supposed to make food and that's it. And then some guy out of nowhere... He just pops into the screen and he's like, that's exactly true. Women are servants. Yes, they are. Bye. And then yeah. that's the end of that point. I have lunch with Carl the Bucket Bank of Corn every week. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So so then uh, on her way home, Martha sees Lazarus all passed out sick in the road. So, you know, we, we cut to him on his on his deathbed. Talia has brought food for him and then Talia and Martha have to have another argument about whether Jesus is the risen Christ or whatever. Yeah. Right? Jesus is a good friend. Je good friends raise each other from the dead. Damn it. <laughs> so right. But Talia's like, no, we all hate that fucking guy. Jesus is the terrible boyfriend that everybody warns you about. Yeah. And Christian people are like, yeah, but when Dogecoin blows up, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> no, you guys got to come see Jesus and his band. He's really yeah. loud. Right. But of course, Lazarus dies before Jesus can get back to to help him. And I, just we, we cut back to the little girl telling us this story. She shows us her, her crayon drawing of Jesus raising Lazarus. They've got Lazarus as a little mummy in the picture because I guess either you can lean into how stupid your story is or you can lie about what it says. <laughs> it's one <laughs> or the other. Right, yeah, so dad's talking to the family here, and he's like, okay, so Lazarus died, and then what happened? And I wanted Sophia, the kid, to be like, Martha joined the fucking science club? I don't know, how is this helpful? What the fuck are you talking about? But yeah, and then and then we the, the mom explains, but even though Jesus brought Lazarus back to life, a lot of the other Jews weren't convinced that he was the Messiah, and I'm like, yeah, it helps if you don't say that part out loud because that's where your story really falls <laughs> apart. Though, is it? Yeah. Kind of also, apart right I love that they can't help but do their stupid the Christ thing. This mm -hmm. is just again one of the sad Mormonism took all the good shit. J JWs are like his name's not Jesus Christ. His name is Jesus the Christ. Yeah, because uh, the idiots who started Je Jehovah's Witnessism were like, they don't say what his last name is. It's probably not Christ. We should clarify <laughs> that and talk like bad chat GPT generators when we talk about our Lord and say they think they're going to get to heaven and he's going to be like, hey, guys. Thanks, because everyone else was having a really hard time finding me in the phone book. They were looking under C for Christ. <laughs> no, I'm not Jesus the Christ Christ. I, I can see the confusion. No, 
just that. Also, in Jehovah's Witnessism, is Jehovah the name of God? Is that what they're using it for? Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. When they say it, why does it sound crazy every time? Like every J Dub, it doesn't matter what part of the world they're from. Every J Dub is from Minnesota the moment they say Jehovah. Right? Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, it's I I guarantee you it's somewhere at a secret meeting that we haven't deserved yet. Is the like, all right, everyone, get together, gather up. Hova, just to really bother everyone else. <laughs> everyone else. We're doing the Stewie Griffin WH sound, but for our Lord and Savior. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, but but mom explains that people like Talia might seem like your friends, but they actually hate Jesus and would turn him in for the reward money in a fucking heartbeat. Well, I, and look, I would get that. I would understand that. Right. Talia turning over Christ. But no, Talia's just like, I don't know. And she's like, hey, hey, be my religion or we can't be friends. And Talia's like, ah, I'm getting the fuck out of here. You seem like a nutbag, Martha. <laughs> Well, right. Yeah, that ends up being the moral of the story. How do you know if somebody should be your friend if they share your mom and dad's religion? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what the whole fucking video is. That's what I, so the, the flashback to the Bible is over and dad's like, so what did we learn about friendship? And the correct answer from Sophia would be like, no Jews. And, he's like, <laughs> and he'd be like, yep, correct. That is it. He, his exact words are that's my girl. Yeah. Jesus, that's fucking dark. So, yeah, so she goes upstairs to finish her homework. That is her Bible reading homework, apparently. And while she's up there, she prays that Jehovah will send her a friend. <laughs> okay, this, this is the best. Her little turtle looks over and he's like, what am I fucking chop liver over here? I might not, <laughs> I not count. Well, no, the, the turtle doesn't believe in Jesus either. It's so good. She's praying to God. Like, let me get a f one friend. I'm a child. And nothing happens because, you know, God's not there. And she has to look over this sad kid and be like, turtle, is this, does this count? Is this, I, I'm friends <laughs> with a turtle. I wanted the turtle then to like put on a yarmulke and pull out a birthday cake. <laughs> <laughs> Shakes his head at her. Do a blood <laughs> transfusion somehow. Yeah, right, yeah. Right, yeah. But no, the turtle doesn't count. But just then, Lydia, the 45-year-old from church, shows up to help work on her talk. And wouldn't you know it, Lydia's wearing turtle earrings. Turns out she's a turtle fan, too. Okay. I have to talk about how this was shot because I was so deeply confused by the eroticism. Huh. So Noah is right. She is wearing turtle earrings. But the way the movie shows that to you is she does a slow motion hair toss. And I was like, this little girl wants to fuck this grown up who came over to her house. I didn't see the turtle earrings. So I just thought, I thought they were doing like a one. Yep, and, and then and the whole thing ends with Lydia going, you know what, Sophia, I think we're going to be friends. So hooray, Sophia's prayers are answered. I'm seven feet tall and 45, <laughs> the end. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> right. All right. Well, whether they intended it to be or not, the moral of this story is very clearly don't be a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> and I guess with that important reminder, we'll wrap up this installment of God Awful Minis. Before we reduce heat and let simmer tonight, I want to thank everybody who's been sending headlines to us at scathingnews at gmail.com. It, it's making our jobs a lot easier and helping us branch out and touch on stories from more places. So even if you haven't heard one of your suggestions on the show, know that they are appreciated. Anyway, that's all the blasphemy we've got for you tonight. We'll be back in 10,022 minutes with more. If you can't wait that long, be on the lookout for a brand new episode of our sister's host, Hot Friend, God Awful Movies, debuting at 7 Eastern on Tuesday, and an even new episode of our half sister host, Hitation Needed, debuting at noon Eastern on Wednesday. Obviously, this show would lack the requisite panache if I neglected to thank Heath Enright for dropping the knowledge. Eli Bosnick for dropping the mic and Lucinda Illusions for dropping the hammer. I also want to thank Brandon's business manager for providing this week's Farnsworth quote. One small quibble, though, it is the official position of both the scathing atheist and its parent company, Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC, that Trump supporters should continue using their firearms as sex toys. 
I can see way more ways that goes right for us than wrong. But most of all, of course, I want to thank this week's best people, Gary Boo, Mike, Jennifer, Tone, Josh, Michael, Thilo, Skeptic, Anonicus, James, Tracy, Zach, Ty, Mike, Sazzlecat, and Chris. Gary, Mike, Jennifer, Tone, and Josh were so sharp you'd swear they were crafted by Hatari Hanzo. Michael, Philo, Skeptic, Anonicus, James, and Tracy who are so badass Chuck Norris makes memes about them. And Zach, Ty, Mike, Sazzlecat, and Chris who are so brainy sometimes the Ninja Turtles attack them by mistake. Together, these 15 new and returning patrons made us less broke this week by giving us money. If you too would like to give us money, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash scathing atheist, whereby you earn early access to an extended ad free version of every episode, or you can make a one time donation by clicking on the donate button on the right side of the homepage at scathingatheist.com. And if you'd like to help but you can't afford to donate until you find the treasure, you can also help a ton by leaving a five star review, telling a friend about the show, or following us on social media. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres, Tim Robertson handles of social media, and our audio engineer is Martin Clark, who also wrote musical issues in this episode, which was used with permission. If you have questions, comments, or death threats, you find all the contact info on the contact page at scathingatheist.com. Canadian Morgan, I was, I, I'm going to be turning on my air conditioner when this record is over. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved.